guys, it's Classic DM with another video. Today we're going to talk about the details behind the Portal World Battle Map and some drawing tips I use. This is kind of a resurrection of a video I did a long time ago, but I want to modernize it a little bit and give you some more tips. Let's go ahead and just jump right into some fun stuff here. So, you know, I use this setup a lot. If you saw my old videos a long time ago, you see I have this kind of very different setup from most people. And the reason why I did this is because it's very portable and it works for a room-to-room -room basis. So if you're doing... A, a battle map and you're incrementally drawing every part of the dungeon as the players explore that's really the best way to go that's the fantastic way to go and in the second part of the video there's gonna be a bunch of drawing tips I'll give you some architectural little simple little tricks you can do to make those maps really pop and look really cool for your players the first thing I want to show you though however is how do we get this battle map and what's the deal with it and why would we even do it this way right so let's go ahead and uh, show you how that works so one of the first things you'll notice right away is this shiny surface here right now what we have here is we have miniatures and some tokens and i have another video that explains how to make these different tokens right so this is a dry erase marker and this is plexiglass right so you know this is money man you can do whatever you want i cast fireball it's going to be centered here it's a 30 foot radius Boom, everyone inside this radio make a saving throw, okay? And if you don't like that, you can just erase it. In this situation, I've got a combination of a map underneath and, uh, and details on top that I can just completely clear out. So let me show you how this works because you could leverage this technique for really cheap to do things your own way without having to be, uh, having to roll out a map that doesn't want to lay flat. So first, I'm going to erase all this, right? There goes the trees. And I'll try not to bump the camera. We got a new camera stand coming. This existing camera stand is a little bit shaky. The springs on it aren't very good. So underneath this, you see there's a map. And so you have a drawing surface, a map, and then a grid. So this is a piece of plexiglass, okay? So you go to, you know, this is an 18 by 24, extremely inexpensive, like 7.99 dry erase white marker board really cheap you can get this at Hobby Lobby this is a piece of plexiglass cut to fit from Lowe's and you notice you see these little plastic things that are on here these are called cabinet stops right and it's a little bit blurry on here cabinet stops come in a pack you can get them at Home Depot and what they're used for is when you slam the door on your kitchen cabinet there's a little rubber sticky thing it has a self-adhesive back onto it so I have this you know piece of 18 by 24 piece of plexiglass and I put cabinet stops on the back face of it so let's just give you a better view of the cabinet stops. see this little see this little thing right here these are little cabinet stops these aren't even super glued or anything it's just the adhesive that comes with it and I put them at the points where the plexiglass is gonna flex right and so that's on the underside that keeps this plexiglass off the surface now it, you can push down on it a little bit but you can't really tell it it basically means people can do whatever they want to do they can roll dice on this thing and, and whatever you want to do the advantage of this is plexiglass won't break so it's not going to shatter i once did this with glass and even tempered glass and it still broke because the glass was spanning so far so this allows you to you know draw additional details if you need to on your battle mount really quickly so we're drawing right so the thing about drawing that's really cool is that means it gives you complete flexibility to make anything you want based upon how good your drawing ability is now what's the deal with the map underneath and you can just use a regular dry erase marker eraser as well which is these little felt things cost nothing so you get the piece of plexiglass 18 by 24 the edges won't cut you so you don't have to worry about you slicing your hand open and you can put this on top of this and carry it and take it anywhere you, goodbye we're gone right now here's another thing about this let's take this off now underneath here i have this technique i like to use where i draw maps using architectural tracing paper and this is just taped down right just lo loosely taped down with some masking tape or drafting tape if you have any and this is just a little map i drew right so i could actually trace another battle map i could you know find a part of a dungeon I've got printed out and traced just that one room. I can piece them together because of cause it's only 18 by 24. We don't show the whole dungeon the whole time. You aren't having to put lots of pieces of paper to cover up the whole map. You're, you're only revealing what you want to reveal as you play. Now, most people don't do this. I think I'm the only guy that does it this way. Why do I use the tracing paper? First of all, it takes Sharpie marker really well. It's two-sided, so I can do stuff on the back and I can do stuff on the front. It takes color pencil really well. But even if you just keep it black and white, right? It's a really, really easy way for you to draw maps very quickly without having a huge investment because the paper that you get, 
this roll of tracing paper, for example, this is an 18-inch roll, so it would completely cover the whole width of the, of the board. And here's like a 12-inch roll if you only need something that's small. So you can see this map here was just done with a 12-inch roll, and I drew the other details on top of the uh, battle glass itself. And for example, in the Indigo Oasis, which is a big map that I just leave taped down on a separate, separate board at all times, I can just pull it up at any time and put it on the table and start playing, right? So let's move that out of the way. So why would you want to do that? Well, did you see how I just changed maps in like two seconds? So if you have one or two, if you have a, a bunch of maps drawn like this, right? They can be rolled up. So you can roll these things up and put them in a little tube and then you can bring 70, you can bring all of the hill giant, you know, standing the hill giant with you in 18 by 24 segments. All you have to do is just like figure out which parts you want to actually show at what time. So say you say, hey, Classic DM, I can't draw like you, dude. You, you, uh, you, your drawing is really cool. Your technique's different than mine. Um, I want to use some, uh, you know, like little tiles I got from Pathfinder. Or I just want to do the old school way, kind of like a battle map, where I just kind of draw some, some lines to get an idea of what, what you get to play on, right? And here's what I see most people do, right? So they have this like, okay, there's a long hallway. It's 10 feet wide. There's a door. And you come in the room and the passageway goes this way and it niches back and this passageway goes this way and it niches back and I see people with their miniatures or even kitchen magnets on the table and that's pretty good for the tactical perspective of understanding whether this guy can see you yet or not that's fine but this map looks like crap it just doesn't look cool, right? But there's nothing wrong with this not becoming cooler looking. And I want to transition from uh, the, the map technique to how to draw that a little bit better. Now, I told you about how to make the plexiglass, right? Not very expensive, really easy to do. Now, how do you get the board? So this is an 18 by 24 board. You can get this at um, Hobby Lobby. It's kind of back in the back with some of the craft things. What I've done is I glued it to an extremely thick uh, half inch thick piece of foam core. The reason why I did that, it gives it the stiffness and the rigidity for me to carry it. So I can take these things and stack them in a corner and every now and then if they start to bow or something like a guitar, I can put them in a different stand, right? So this is what it looks like up close. Now the grid that's on here, this grid that's on here is um, permanent. It doesn't wipe off. This is not dry erase. This is in a situation where I made, you know, measured one inch tick marks, tick, 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 this way in the X and Y axis put a straight edge down, got a, a Sharpie, and then drew the lines. This, do not ever draw on this, right? If you draw on this, you will smudge and rub away, especially if you put dry erase marker on top of permanent. This is a trick in, if you're still working in an office, you know, if you ever have someone use a permanent marker on a marker board, uh, write on top of it with a dry erase marker, and then you can wipe it away, and the permanent marker will go away underneath it. So you never actually draw on this. So therefore, that's why we have lots of these portable little skinny little maps that can roll up really easily. Then we can have an infinite number of maps, very compact, doesn't require uh, uh, us to have to, to battle the rolling out problem. Now, if you just wanna stick with a battle map and you don't wanna do all this, that's fine. Let me show you some drawing tricks that you can do to make your maps look a little cooler, okay? So let's pull this other board up here, another 18 by 24 dry erase marker board and let me get this lined up right so the secret to drawing better dungeon maps is two line weights right and you get one of these expo dry erase markers take the cap off stick it in the other end and it looks like this right you have it in your hand right and it's a chisel point this is called a chisel point marker so how do you draw with a chisel point well you can do two thin two line weights the thin line weights by only using the sharp tip like this one two, three, four, and you can do bold flat lines by twisting it in your hand and making it you know, plainer with the fat lip like this. So this gives you two types of line weights. Even with just two little line weights, there's a lot of really cool things you can do to make things look better. So for example, let's say this is, you wanted to draw a crappy set of trees. So circle, 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 circle. And architecturally, we would just go hack, 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 hack like this. You put some jibble bits with the, temp, the, the little tip here, and then you go around the edges, and you say, you know what, let me just put some shadow on the south side, like this, and you've made some kind of vegetation. 
The thing about vegetation and rubble and other junk that's really cool is what you want to do is you want to you want to be use the, the point tip and just use you uh, loosely draw you know, random sketchy crap and then every now and then draw something underneath it that feels like maybe it's a big rock and then kind of come in with the flat end this broad tip and go boom shadow boom shadow boom shadow and that will help it look like there's some junk in the corner right what's another tip you can do okay i see a lot of people when they're drawing their walls they're just using like they're just going like this right here's a wall and here's the dead end passage and here's the secret door you discovered and here's this wall so this is like stick man figure method it just doesn't really look cool it works but it doesn't really feel three-dimensional so what you want to do instead is you want those walls that are the boundaries to the dungeon let's just put some very faint little lines here to represent one inch squares I'm just gonna eyeball this okay Oop, that one's too small but it's okay let's say you're drawing a, on the grid you're gonna draw a 10 foot wide hallway right you want to use the broad tip and put it on the outside face usually the outside face so you're gonna draw a hallway here so you can put this on the outside face and you go from pull it towards yourself like this then pull this down here keep it flat pull it toward one single stroke don't don't go like this right don't do this like scratchy jiggly thing because it makes all this weird cockamamie type business if you're doing cave walls you want to do the same kind of thing you've got a battle map you've got a bunch of grid lines everywhere like this right and you don't really want to make it the most perfect geometric looking cave walls ever that's fine hold the broad tip down and just put it down and push down and just make your broad ca cavern walls like this and let's say there's a little grotto happening in this corner here then you take the thin tip and just kind of loosely you know d dabble down some little ripple lines something like this put some little wiggly bits and say well here's a grotto and the water splashing down right and then we, another thing you can do is kind of put some little stippling which is a little point here around the edges right and you can even do terrain marks so this slopes down thin line thin line all right cool that's really all i want to show you today just to give you a quick snapshot of how to make this portable battle map you can use it as if it's a dry erase marker board if it's 18 by 24 it's totally convenient to carry around hopefully these little simple thin line weight and broad line weight tips will help you when you're drawing your maps be bold use you know use shadows you know you've got a bed laying in the corner like this it's to scale you know here's the west side here's the south side always think about the fact that north right is to the top and the sun is going to rise in the east go up in the air and go down like that and if you have torches right let's say you have uh, torches here along this wall let's say here's a wall here and here's torch and smoke is burning right the lights coming from this direction so these shadows would be right right if the torch was down here or something like that you would want the shadows to be on the opposite side all right cool i'll stop it there sometimes my videos get too long but you got the information you need if you have any questions or comments about any of these things let me know and i'll help you out any way i can you guys have a great day we'll talk to you soon